How's it going guys? I'm here today to tell you that you've been using Chestnut all wrong. Usually people run it defensively, but today I'm going to show you a different strat. Utilizing the move Belly Drum to raise our attack to sky high levels, and Trailblaze, a new move introduced in Scarlet and Violet, that boosts your speed whilst attacking. Today's first game is against Puff, and the second game is against Reese, both from the Pokemon Battle Hub Discord, which you should definitely join if you want to battle me. Link in the description down below. Before the battles begin, be sure to Trailblaze that subscribe button, and without further ado, let the battles commence. Okay, Puffs brought a pretty cool team. Entei is a really cool Pokemon to see. The Quagsire, the Vileplume, Snorlax, Corviknight, and Dragonite. All really cool mons. Um, definitely a cool team, to be to be fair. So, Chestnut looks like it could put some work in. We set up a Belly Drum, we'll be golden. Um, we just need to take care of that Dragonite a little bit, and the Corviknight a little bit, and the Entei a little bit. But I think we're alright. So, I think what I might do here is I might just lead off with Latios, drop a Draco, a Jackpack out. I think that might be a good strat. Or we can lead off with Fretress and get the Stealth Rocks up. They might lead with Entei though, because the Ninetales or the Fretress are an obvious lead. So I think I lead with Latios. And then we can, like I said, we can just drop a Draco on something and then just eject back out and get into a good position. So let's do that. And the battle begins. Good luck. Have fun, Puff. So they're going to lead off with Chunkula, <laughs> the Snorlax, as I led off with my Latios. So this thing's a bit specially defensive, so there's no point dropping a Draco just yet. We may as well just flip turn on it, because I'll... Um, it's more than likely going to be a Salt Vest or something along those lines. So let's go for a Flip Turn right off the bat. Just get out of there. And then we'll go into something to take care of this Snorlax. So Flip Turn comes through. Now, I don't want to lose any unnecessary health on my um, Chestnut. So I'm not going to bring Chestnut in here, I don't think. Um, I think I'm going to go into Fretress. Because if they are a Curse set, we want to make sure that we don't get swept by it. So Red Card will help us with that. They go for a Body Slam, which is fine. It's going to do no damage. It activates the red card, which I'm looking at the team, and the only thing we could have really stopped from setting up with that is the Dragonite. So it, it doesn't really matter too much. So a uh, Dragonite doesn't normally carry Fire Punch, but it can, but it doesn't normally, I don't think. So um, we don't have to worry about that too much. Quagsire gets dragged out, though, which is great. So we can get our Stealth Rocks up. They can get their Stealth Rocks up. Let's go for the Stealth Rocks. Screw it. They withdraw. What Are they going to go Corviknight or Entei? Scorcher, that's got to be the Entei, right? It is the Entei. So Entei comes in. We get the Stealth Rocks up. Entei looks so cool in this game. So cool in this game. I really want to use an Entei. Really want to use an Entei right now. Um. Anyway, let, <laughs> it's enough Entei fanboying. Uh, let's switch out. So I'm, I'm leaning towards if they go for a Sacred Fire. Salazzle is probably the best option, but I want to keep the Focus Sash. I'm going to go Latios. I think Latios is a good option. Entei doesn't really get much Selp. So we don't have to worry about them going for a Swords Dance here or anything like that, which is great. And they do go for a Shadow Ball. Oh, are they a special Entei? That's awesome. Doesn't do much damage. But now we're just simply going to drop a Draco and get a free switch. If they switch out, they switch out. If they go into Snorlax, we get a free switch into Chestnut. And they do withdraw Scorcher. They don't have a Fairy type. Probably going to see a Corviknight, actually. Tronculant, that's Snorlax. Never mind. Snorlax comes in. We get a free Stealth Rock Chip and the Draco Meteor off on them, which is nice. Draco Meteor comes through, and that's going to do a lot of damage to the Snorlax, which is fantastic. So, if we assume, if we assume for one second that Chestnut could do something here, we should go into it. Let's go into Chestnut. Chestnut can take care of this Snorlax, no problem. We don't need to Belly Drum just yet. We just want to get. We just want to get rid of this thing. So. Let's go for a Drain Punch right off the bat. They do withdraw. They could go Corviknight or Dragonite here. Or Vileplume, to be fair. Uh, Scorch comes in. That's the Entei. So we get some nice chip on the Entei. After some no Stealth Rock damage because the heavier you boots. Drain Punch is getting a crit here, which is amazing. And that does a lot of damage regardless of the crit. So if we assume now, they'll probably go for a Fire-type move. We should go Salazzle, because Latios is a bit weakened, so I don't want to go into Latios and get hurt. So, Star comes in, which is great. The Salazzle. They go for a Sacred Fire this turn, yeah, I thought, that, I thought they would. Um, so now, we're in a very unique position, because we can go for a Sludge Wave, and they're only switching really as Corviknight. Or I guess Quagsire to an extent. Let's go for a Sludge Wave. They withdraw Entei, which is great. Entei is going to go out into Chonkula, the Snorlax. We're going to get some nice chip on this thing. Chonkula is probably going to go down to this Sludge Wave, which is great. So Sludge Wave comes through. 
And it probably goes down, right? No, it doesn't. It does barely live. But now, if they switch out, they switch out. Let's go for a flamethrower. Yeah, flamethrower takes them out. It, it would also take out the vile plume if they brought that in for some reason. Or the Corviknights, potentially. Like, if they were like, oh crap, my Snorlax is going to die. Let's go into Corviknight to be immune to the Sludge Wave. Then Flamethrower would be the best option there. Now comes Tempest. That's going to be the uh, Dragonite. Interesting. So this thing's going to set up all over us. It's going to set up a Dragonite right now. So we have to go for a Sludge Wave here. Sludge Wave comes through. It's going to do a nice little bit of chip. Nothing too drastic. And um, they go for a Waterfall. I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting a Dragon Dance, but um, Salazzle going down there isn't the end of the world. Um, definitely isn't the end of the world. So we can assume they probably don't have Terra. We assume they probably don't have Terra. We should probably go into Chestnut. No, we should go into Dra uh, Latios. They've, they've not got much to take a Draco Meteor now. And they've not got much to take a Draco Meteor now. So let's go for Latios and then we'll go for... Just drop a Draco. Drop a Draco. They withdraw. They're going to go Corviknight, probably. Chairman Rose. That's going to be Corviknight, right? Vile Plume. Vile Plume. We drop a Draco. That's going to really sting that Vile Plume. As there we go. So Special Attack is going to drop. As you would expect. So. Here's the problem we've got. The Entei is weakened, right? So if we go for a flip turn here. I'm going to go for a flip turn here. I would go for a Luster Purge to take it out, but I thought they would switch out there into the uh, Corviknight now that they have a special attack drop on us. But I guess they were sacking the Valplume, which is fine. Um, if we assume they're going to go for a Sludge Bomb or something along those lines. Sludge Bomb, we should go into Chestnut because of the Bulletproof. So let's go Chestnut now. We're going to Juggernaut now. There we go. They go for a, ooh, a Strength Sap. Oh, I didn't think about the Strength Sap. That's terrifying. So that's going to recover their health all the way up to full. Okay. So now we should Terra Steel. No, we should Belly Drum, right? That's Belly Drum. They can't Sludge Bomb us. So we go for a Belly Drum here. Uh, oh, I've not EV this properly. That's annoying. And they go for another Strength Stab, which is going to recover their health. But now we're at plus four, I believe. Or does Belly Drum actually maximize it? So let's have a look. Oh, yeah, we're at plus five. Okay, that's fine. So now we can just go for a knockoff or a trailblaze. Um, leaning towards the trailblaze to outspeed things. I think I will go trailblaze here. So trailblaze comes through. Bit of damage. Nothing too drastic. We get a speed boost. They go for a strength step again, which is going to take us down to plus four. Um, but knockoff should be able to KO this thing, right? Maybe. Let's try it. Let's go for a knockoff real quick. Let's go for a knockoff at plus four. Takes him out. Brilliant. So now that the Vile Plume is gone, and we're at plus four with plus one speed, we're looking pretty good with Chestnut right now. We're looking really good with Chestnut right now. Tempest comes in. That's going to be the Dragonite, right? Yeah, Dragonite comes in. Um, we Terra Steel and we knock off. We always Terra Steel here and we knock off because if they go for a, a Dual Wing Beat or a fi uh, well, Fire Punch might take us out, but... Um, I, they've got Waterfall, so I'm assuming they have Extreme Speed. And I'm assuming they have a Dragon Stab, maybe. Or a Flying Stab in, in your Wing Beat, maybe. Um, or Earthquake. So, uh, they go for Extreme Speed with Terra Steel. We're going to take that like a champ. And then we simply activate our Citrus Berry, like so. Like so. And we go for a knockoff, which should take out the Dragonite from here at plus four. It does. So, the Dragonite goes down, which is fantastic. Chestnut is coming through right now. What an absolute beast. Marcus the once well trained comes in. Who's Marcus? Corviknight. This is a good opportunity for us because we've got Drain Punch. And Drain Punch probably won't take out the Corviknight, but it will recover our HP. So let's go for a Drain Punch right now. Drain Punch comes through and it nearly does the job. Nearly does the job. As it recovers some of our HP or all of our HP, I think. Yeah, all of it. And then Rocky Helmet. Yeah, Rocky Helmet's there. They go for a body press, which is going to do a decent bit of chip damage to us, but nothing too drastic. And then we simply go for another Drain Punch and take this thing out. Drain Punch comes through. Corviknight does go down swiftly, which is great. And we know the, the Entei is not Choice Scarfed or anything like that. It's Heavy Duty Boots. Um, we do get the Rocky Helmet Chip, which gets rid of the recoil, uh, the, the health recovery that we had. So we're still low on HP. So 
If the Entei comes in at extreme speeds and te or terrors or something and gets a crit, then we are kind of boned for the uh, chestnut. But, you know, let's see what they're going to do. So Entei comes in. Entei comes in. We go for a drain punch 100% of the time. Because even if they terror, which they are going to terror, are they going to terror normal extreme speeds to try and get the KL? But they are heavy duty boots, so we should be able to live. Terror fire. Ooh, okay. So why? Interesting choice. So we go for a Drain Punch, that's going to KO the Entei, which is great. So Entei goes down, we get some health recovery, and that just leaves the Quagsire. Now the Quagsire is an interesting one, because if it has Unaware, it should be able to take Trailblaze. So Entei goes down, which is fantastic. Chestnut done really well this game, and this is against Puff. Puff's a really good player. I always have amazing battles with Puff. Quagsire comes in, it's at full. If it's Unaware, it can probably take a Trailblaze and KOs with Earthquake. So we go for a Trailblaze anyway. Trailblaze comes through. Oh no, that was, oh, that was a clean KO on the Quagsire right there. So GG Puff. Chestnut came through. What a battle. That was awesome. Okay, so Reese has brought a pretty cool team. I see the Toxtricity and I love it. The Torterra is also really cool and Basket Legion is awesome. Titar is nice to see. It's kind of dropped in usage recently, but it's still looking pretty good, I think. So Cinderace and Goldengo as their own humans. Awesome. So I, I want to leave. Well, well, they haven't got a hazard clearer, so they probably caught change Cinderace. So I don't want to get my hair screens just yet. I want to get rid of that Cinderace first. I could lead straight with Latios and drop a Draco to a jack pack, but I want to save that for later. So I might lead strong with Salazzle. And then if they go Basque Legion, we just switch into Foretris. If they go Cinderace or anything else, we can just deal with. So um, let's go. Let's let's lead. Um, let's lead Salazzle. Just put some offensive pressure on them straight away. And then we'll kind of go from there. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Reese. Nice trip. Anyway, they're going to lead off with Gerard. The Cin Cinderace. I like that name. That's a cool name. As we lead off with Salazzle. Okay, so not a bad lead. We can just go for a Sludge Wave straight away. I am going to go for a Sludge Wave straight away because Cinderace is a threat. Um, and we want to get damage on the threat straight away. Um, if they can go t tar that'll break our Sash with the Sandstorm. But it's fine. So they go for a U-turn, which is going to break our Sash anyway. And that does no damage because it's quad resisted, which is great. So Reese goes back. Uh, Gerard goes back to Reese. Let's see what they go into. Probably T Tar if I had to guess. I guess Basque Legion also works. Let's see what they go into. Grimlock. That's the T Tar. So T Tar comes in. It's going to get that nice speed death boost in the Sandstorm. Um, but we might get the poison, which could be big. Could be big. No poison, which is good. I, I, I say good. Uh, no poison. Let's just say with that. No poison. Um, so if we assume we're going to go for a Stone Edge or an Earthquake, we should probably go into Chestnut. I think Chestnut is a sound switch. I don't know whether they go for a knockoff here, knocking off our Citrus Berry, but Chestnut does really well here. So let's go into Juggernaut. The Chestnut. They go for a Dragon Dance. Okay. I'm down. So this thing's a threat right now with a Dragon Dance up. T-Tar is always a threat with a Dragon Dance. Let's see what we can do here. So I'm leaning towards just going straight for a Drain Punch. Yeah, I'm going to go for a Drain Punch. Screw it. They go for a knockoff, which is going to sting a little bit, but not too much. It's going to knock off our Citrus Berry, which is unfortunate. But we're going to get all the health back anyway from the Drain Punch. So Drain Punch takes out the T-Tar, which is fantastic. So Chestnut putting in the work once again. Get rid of that T-Tar now. Salazzle doesn't have much to switch into it other than the Basque Legion, which outspeeds and can Terra Grass, Terra Blast. Neil comes in. Who's Neil? The Basque Legion. That's an interesting one. So we do have Trailblaze and Knockoff. I'm going to Trailblaze. I'm going to Trailblaze. They go for a Psychic Fang, which is going to sting a little bit. Might flinch us. We go for a Trailblaze, though. That's going to definitely do a lot of damage. It nearly takes them out, giving us a speed boost as well. So Chestnut's looking pretty threatening right now. Which is great, but I'm pretty sure the Cinderace can live a Drain Punch and go for a Pyro Ball. Well, does Pyro Ball affect Bulletproof Pokemon? I don't know. Let's go for a knockoff and find out. So they're going to Terror. Ooh, what type are they going to Terror into? If they're Banded and we knock it off, then we live the Psychic Fangs. Terror Ghost. Nah, never mind. The Terror Ghost. Unless they're Choice Scarf, I'm pretty sure we outspeed here. But they can't Poltergeist us anyway. Yeah, they can't Poltergeist because they knocked off our Zitra Berry, so... Uh, ba Basque Legion goes down, which is awesome. And Chestnut's looking pretty good right now. Sin comes in, which is going to be the Goldengo. Now, Goldengo, we don't take out. We don't take that thing out um, at all. 
But getting a knockoff off on it is going to be really useful. So I'm going to go for a knockoff real quick. Get rid of its item, whatever it's holding. Does a nice 50%. A bit higher than 50% actually. Pop in their air balloon. They go for a make it rain. And that takes out the chestnut. But chestnut's done really well this game. It's, it's, it's took out the Basque Legion. It took out the Tyranitar after Dragon Dance. It's half taken out the Goldengo, which is amazing. But now, looking at their team, I'd say Salazzle. Salazzle? Salazzle. <laughs> Salazzle does pretty well here. So let's go Salazzle. Scare this thing out. They kind of have to go Cinderace here. They really have to go Cinderace. So I'm going to go for a Sludge Wave predicting the Cinderace. If this fails, it's not the end of the world because they're minus special attack. They do withdraw the Goldengo, though. Are they going to go in Cinderace? Gyro. Is that the Toxtricity? Yeah, it is. So that's a good play. We go for a Sludge Wave. That's obviously going to fail to KO the Toxtricity, but it does a lot of damage. As an, I'm going to withdraw my Salazzle now. I'm going to go straight into Umbreon. Uh, Umbreon's my special defensive wall. So we can definitely take a Boom Burst from this thing. And even if it gets the Throw Spray, we should be able to take another one afterwards. So Umbreon comes in like so. They go for a Shift Gear. Oh, please don't be physical. That's going to be annoying. The only good side to this is I know we can live a Drain Punch from this thing. And we can probably take them out with a Foul Play now. So let's go for a Foul Play. Boom Burst. So they're, oh, they're a Speed Boosting Boom Burst set with probably Throat Spray, right? Yeah, Throat Spray. So that's that's fine. This, this Toxtricity thinks it's setting up on us, but it's actually not. Because thanks to the Shift Gear, this Foul Play should KO. As it does. So Toxtricity goes down, which is fantastic. Um, absolutely amazing stuff by Umbreon right there. What a what a team player. Gerard comes in the Cinderace. Now, we're probably going to get smacked in the face with a... Um, an attack here. So, what do we do? Uh, if we assume they're going to go for a stab U turn, we should go into Fretress. Fretress ain't doing much for us anyway. So, let's go Fretress. And even if they go for a Pyro Ball, we live that. And because they're sturdy, and we red card them out. So, it's not the end of the world. So, Fretress comes in. They do go for a U turn. This means they can't get, choose what they go into. Red card forces them into something else. So, there's the red card popping. Now, they can't go into the Goldengo or the Torterra. By choice, they have to go into one by forced into. And either way, it's like not the end of the world. So Goldengo comes in. That's, that's that's an ideal one. That is definitely an ideal one. So with Goldengo in, we always Volt Switch here. So Shadow Ball comes through. That's fine. We're going to live that. Yeah, we live that. We go for a Volt Switch. And then we get Salazzle back in. Pretty much. It's pretty much all we need to do. Get Salazzle back in. So Salazzle comes back in like so. There we go, Salazzle comes through. We know this thing's not Choice Scarf because we popped this air balloon earlier. We go for a Flamethrower. Flamethrower comes through. They didn't really have a switch in. They've got a Torterra in the back and the Cinderace, which could get hit by a Sludge Wave. We already showed earlier that we were willing to go for the Sludge Wave against the Goldengo predicting the switch, so they probably wouldn't go into Cinderace there. In comes Gerard, the uh, Cinderace once again. Now, this thing's an interesting choice, so um, I want to go for a Sludge Wave. I go for the Sludge Wave because I'm pretty sure we can live a Sucker Punch, but they actually go for an Iron Head. A strategic Iron Head. That's awesome. Absolutely awesome. We flinch as well, which is unfortunate. But now it's a Steel type. We should be able to live a hit and go for a Flamethrower. Because the Power Ball is no longer stabbed, so it won't take us out. The Iron Head doesn't take us out either. We go for a Flamethrower. Salazzle coming through, taking out the Cinderace that was turned into a Steel type. That was a good play, though. Go for the Iron Head, predicting the Sludge Wave. Really good play. It's just a shame that you... Didn't do enough damage, that's all. That's that's the problem. So Road Buster comes in. Now, they haven't terrored yet, right? Or no, they terrored the Basque Legion, so we're alright. Let's go for a, a flamethrower. Flamethrower comes through, it should take out the Torterra if it lives and goes for a shell spot. I was saying. They are focus sash Torterra with Rock Slide. That's gonna take out Salazzle. So now Torterra's looking in interesting. So a focus sash Torterra set. Very interesting, but unfortunately for them, we just go Latios here and Luster Purge. So Latios comes in. We're going to finish this off with a big Luster Purge. Luster Purge comes through. And that is a dead Torterra. So with Torterra gone, we are looking pretty sweet right now. So GG Reese, that was a fun game. Um, we definitely cooked with that team. Um, definitely, definitely, definitely cooked with that team. So the next team, we're going to use Ampharos. So look forward to that. But GG Reese.